Okay, this is the third part of the lesson for lesson 1-4 in Algebra 1, um, having to do with graphs of functions. And this piece of the lesson is talking about how to find domain and range on a graph. And I've sort of been teasing you about this for a while because there's a bunch of problems I've said, oh, that would be so much easier if you see it on a graph. However, people do still struggle with this concept on a graph, so I want to make sure that you, you know, get a good handle on it. Um, so when you're thinking about a graph, domain and range do still mean the same things. But sometimes it's easier to phrase the question better. The domain is all x values um, covered by the graph. And then the range is the same thing, except it's all y values covered by the graph. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute. So if you look at this first example, I can very finitely see where my graph starts and where my graph ends. Okay, I can point to it. All right, and that's going to be slightly different than some of the other ones that we do. So for example, on this one, I can say, well, the farthest to the left these x values go is negative 4. Okay, that's the farthest to the left this graph covers. And then if I go as far to the right as I possibly can, that goes up to positive 3. Okay? So for my domain, here's how I'm going to say it. All right? And don't get caught up in the notation here. It's going to work the same way every time. I'm going to start at negative 4. Okay? And I'm going to say less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 3. Three. So I went from the smaller number to the bigger number. This chunk in the middle here just means that x is in between those two. So all of my x values are bigger than negative 4 and smaller than 3. They fall everywhere in between. Okay. So if you just get used to this notation, it's smallest number, biggest number, and then less than or equal, less than or equal. Okay. Okay. So now for range, I'm going to do the exact same thing, except I'm going to go up and down. I'm going to find the highest point on my graph and the lowest point on my graph. So over here, I would say this is my highest point right here. My highest point is at 4. Now be careful down here. Your lowest point is not your end point. Okay? Some people, as soon as they see that end point, they automatically want to draw a line there. You want to go as far down as your graph goes, and you'll see it dips down a little bit here. So by the time I'm done doing this with the purple lines and the pink lines, I should have my graph kind of boxed in. My, my box should like close in on that graph and cover the entire thing. I shouldn't have any part of my graph sticking out of the box. And then I'm going to write my notation exactly the same way, except I'm going to use y instead of x. So I'm going to start with my smaller number, which is negative 2 is less than or equal to y, and then less than or equal to my bigger number, which is 4. And that's how I would write my range. So here's the domain, here's the range. Okay? And that works out really well when you have a nice finite graph, when it has a clean endpoints and we can point to the numbers that it belongs on. Well, what happens when you go over here to this one? Let me straighten my back of my camera there for a second. Um, this one, I can't point to the highest up point or the farthest left point because these arrows mean that this graph keeps going and going and going. I could never point to the, to the highest or the lowest or the leftmost or the rightmost. I can't find those points. So here's what I ask myself. Okay, We have to get a little abstract here. Um, if I were to build a wall out here to the right of my function, okay, pretend my pen is a wall, and it's a wall that keeps going forever and ever. So it's like, you know, infinitely long. Okay, I'm building a giant wall right along the side of this paper. Is my graph eventually going to hit everything to the right? Yeah, this one would, because this one's going to keep going forever. So it's hitting everything to the right. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here to the left. I'm going to build a wall over here to the left. Okay. And again, it's an infinitely long wall. All right. And I want to know is this graph eventually going to hit everything to the left? And eventually, if I stretch my graph out and stretch my wall out, eventually this graph is going to hit everything to the left. So it hits everything to the left, it hits everything to the right, it hits everything in between. I can say that my domain 
is all real numbers. Okay, because it covers everything from left to right. Then for range, I'm doing the exact same thing except building walls up and down. Okay, so I'm building wall on top of my graph, building wall below my graph. Is my graph eventually going to hit both my pens? Yes, it would. Okay, if I extended it far enough, it would hit them. And no matter how far up and down I move them, and now I took them out off the screen so you can't even see them, um, no matter how far up and down I move them, my graph is still always going to hit them. And so since it covers everything going up and down, we could also say our range is all real numbers. Okay. Seems simple enough. Let's go to this next one. So the next one, when I'm looking for domain, remember that's where I'm building walls left and right, okay? And no matter how far I stretch out these walls, my graph, if I extend it, and if I extend my walls, my graph will always hit them, all right? Because this is stretching out and out forever. So my domain, again, is all real numbers. For my range, if I build walls above and below, hopefully you agree that I am going to hit the wall up above, right? This graph is going to go up and up and up forever. But down below, I'm never going to hit that purple wall, right? In fact, the lowest point my graph is ever going to hit is right there. I can point to it, okay? So I want to somehow say in my range, it's everything from this number up. And going up means greater than. So I would say for my range, it's all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 2 because I do hit negative 2 and then I hit everything above negative 2. Okay. Now, this next one's even trickier. Okay, this is probably the hardest one on here and probably even harder than what you're going to see on your homework, but let's talk about it anyway. Build my walls left and right. I run into no problems here, right? If I extend these, it's eventually going to hit the purple and the pink. All right, so normally I would go with all real numbers. But does it cover everything in between the two walls? Or does it skip anything? And do you see this little gap in between? Okay, that, that these two graphs are going to come along and they're going to sort of skim along that axis. But they don't actually ever touch that line. They don't ever cross that line. And that means that it can't equal zero. All right, it can, I can make X as big of a number as I want it to be. I can make it as small of a number as I want it to be. The only thing that X could never be is zero. All real numbers except zero. And this is going to be one similar to like the ones we've been looking at where you can't have the zero on the bottom of the fraction. This is what the graph would look like. Okay. And then for range, let's go up and down. So up is no problem, right? I'm going to hit that pen up above for sure. But down below, I've got the same thing going on. And we're going to learn a word for this later on. But this graph is going to come and like extend along the X. And just kind of skim along the edge. But it won't ever actually cross it. Okay, so it's going to get closer and closer and closer to zero. But it'll never actually touch it and it'll never drop below it. All right? And so for that reason, we can say, think about what kinds of numbers are always up above zero. That would be all real positive numbers, or you could say all real numbers greater than zero. And notice I didn't use an equal sign because my graph doesn't actually touch zero on the y-axis. Okay? So you do have, part of your homework assignment is from the textbook. Part of your homework assignment is a worksheet on domain and range. Um, I want you to take what you've used here and give that worksheet your best shot, and then we will be going over that in class tomorrow.